What is up, diehards? Wes Monell in the building for A Wall Sports with Dill Monell, Drew LaQuesta. We got the fantasy flash today. We're going to go through 10 topics to help you out. AFC West quarterbacks, all, all are uh, either had a great season last year or they've had great seasons in this league before. Um, that's kind of a note on the, on the back of Russell Wilson, who was a little banged up last year. Tough year in Seattle, gets shipped over to Denver. Uh, maybe he finds a little bit of luck towards the end of his career like Peyton Manning did, like John Elway did. Who knows, even though Elway was there, but Peyton wasn't. Uh, yeah, man, uh, this division, it's been run by Pat Mahomes and company. Derek Carr making a name for himself with a splash last season, entering that playoff picture. Justin Herbert, half game out of that playoff spot. We all know how that season ended for the Chargers. Uh, so you're on the fantasy clock, guys. I mean... Who's the man that you think is going to rack up the most fantasy points from this very competitive AFC West still? Man, this is a, obviously a loaded question here because, you know, um, we already had two guys in the division here throwing, you know, for 5,000 yards. Uh, Russell Wilson, you know, obviously um, has something to prove, right? He has a chip on his shoulder and obviously, you know, he's a great competitor. So, uh, you know, joining this division with, you know, these quality of quarterbacks and obviously Derek Carr getting some additional weapon, you know, and Devontae Adams, um, you know, getting a healthy Waller back. And, you know, obviously everyone's going to talk about Mahomes, you know, losing, uh, you know, pretty dynamic receiver, right? And Tyreek Hill, but uh, he still has Travis Kels there. And uh, it's not like they didn't, you know, bring some additional people into the room there. Uh, whether you like the guy individually or not, Juju is still a legitimate receiver in the league. And, um, I think that's going to be, you know, a big effect between him and Mahomes. And uh, I think him and MVS are going to be able to have a big connection as well. So uh, as much as I hate to say this as a Raider fan, I still think Mahomes has got to be the option out of these guys. Um, as much as I want to say Derek Carr, you know, he, you know, put up 4,800 yards last season and um, he's getting Devonte Adams, right? So you would assume that's just going to go up, but uh, again, you know, they're going to be able to distribute the wealth, but I just, I don't really see my home slowing down. So I think from a fantasy perspective, if you're trying to stack all those points and um, you're willing to invest a high draft pick, you can't go wrong with Mahomes. but I think Carr would be the second best value out of, you know, these uh, AFC West quarterbacks here. Okay, Dill, but Drew, before you go, Dill, we might as well rank three and four while you're at it. Um, I got, so obviously you've got Mahomes, Carr, and then I would say probably Herbert and Wilson. Um, I'll be the lowest on Wilson right now. Um, Herbert, again, I, I think he's going to have a good season. I still struggle to see him putting up back-to-back 5,000-yard seasons. I don't know if Mike Williams is going to be as special as he was last year. Um, I like him as an individual player and, you know, root for him. Um, you know, Clemson, we have a lot of Clemson guys on the team, so I got love for that. But um, I just want to see Mike Williams doing it again. I think Keenan Allen's obviously legit, but I just I don't see a lot of depth in the receiver positions, but – to his point, he still put up 5,000 yards last season. But, again, I just don't see that this year. So, Drew, Herbert, he had the 10th best O-line in the league last year. Nine games over 300 yards passing led all quarterbacks. Is that enough for you moving into 2022 to say he's going to score the most fantasy points at QB in this division? With all the, with all the hype around Patrick Mahomes – it's it's hard to rank Herbert over him, but if you look at it as a perspective, and we're just talking fantasy, obviously, but in both formats, in PPR formats and in the standard format, Herbert did outscore Mahomes statistically. So, I mean, if you're looking at it just with the eye test and you're thinking about the offseason, you're thinking about what this season could be, and you're weighing the two, the obvious, I would say, the obvious team that did lose a lot of that talent producing on the offensive side was the Chiefs so I feel like there's a big question mark right there losing Tyreek Hill now Patrick Mahomes we've seen the stats out there probably it's it's been all over fantasy and ESPN and um, and all those sports casting stations to where Patrick Mahomes was still phenomenal in all the games that Tyreek Hill did not play in but still at some point for a 17 game season you're still going to have to find ways to get someone the rock. And yes, Kelsey's still there, but at the same time, you need that outside and slot coverage to, to make up for it. So if I'm going to bank and 
you talked about the O-line. We could even say that the O-line is going to be ranked even higher for the Chargers. The defense is still great, if not better. So I would say Herbert has to be, for me, what I would feel as if if I was in the draft room and I'm weighing those two options. I got to see an uptick in, in Herbert and maybe, if not the same year, a little bit less of a statistical year for Mahomes just because of that loss of Tyreek. Hmm. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, Dill started to list some of the players off. Juju, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling. They drafted Sky Moore. They still have Josh Gordon on the roster. They're still the speedster and Mikel Hardman. Mikel Hardman. Uh, that's five wideouts right there. You know, maybe a New England Patriot approach. Justin where Ross as well. They they're spreading. That. Yeah, Justin Ross, undrafted free agent, right? Um, yeah, that's that's six dudes, a lot of talent. No Tyreek Hill, proven at least. Maybe some pieces in place to to, to have a wide receiver unit complement that for arguably the best quarterback in the league, maybe just in the AFC. Um, so I'm pretty sure we're all kind of the lowest on Russell Wilson. Um, so Drew, you did you pick Mahomes? I mean, did you just pick Herbert? Yes, yes. I, I would take Herbert over Mahomes, just in this scenario, just because – if I'm really going to choose that for my fantasy team, and obviously we're probably investing some amount of dollars for it also, you know, you got to follow exactly what you feel is going to be the outcome of the season. So I've, I've seen this team, I've seen these receivers, I've seen Herbert with that chemistry. I understand that there's additions to the teams on, on for the chiefs and all of them do have some sort of track record record, but it wasn't with Mahomes. It was with other quarterbacks. They're still going to have to find that chemistry um, obviously they have Andy Reid also, who is uh, a genius, especially in the first few weeks, um, writing up plays that they haven't seen before, but you still got to show me seeing is believing for me. It's, it's hard for me to just bank on that. All right, Drew, making some compelling points on Justin Herbert deal. You went with Mahomes, the proven commodity, despite the changes out wide, you guys know I've been high on this Derek Carr guy. <laughs> Deal. I know you're the Raiders fan. I follow them because of you, but I've meant it. I've been I've been a big DC guy, uh, and you guys are on the bandwagon too. I know we're splitting hairs with an awesome division of teams and quarterbacks as we see here, and it's pertaining to fantasy football. So I get it. We got to make our pick, split these hairs. Mahomes has the fifth best O line. I just want to throw that in as well. At you know with Andy Reid, so more good more points to to kind of yeah stick with what you know and pat mahomes i totally understand that on the flip side drew with your herbert he nearly doubled mahomes in games over 300 yards nine to five uh and that's phenomenal um i i, I go with Derek carr who had the 28th ranked offensive line still found a way to make the playoffs before these last 17 18 games if you add the postseason no one even wanted Hunter Renfro or anybody else out wide. And before two years ago, maybe no one wanted Darren Waller. This guy is earning people contracts. He's making the playoffs, had an interim coach in the middle of last year and still balled out. Uh, and, and I think it's going to translate more onto the fantasy scene. Devonte Adams deal, as you mentioned, Hunter Renfro to Marcus Robinson. They pick up from the chiefs, a complimentary piece, but nonetheless, another vet. Uh, on the field they had you know recent history with crabtree another veteran um so maybe they can you know repeat that success as on the wide receiver two side and don't forget darren waller was banged up the last month of the season that hurts cars numbers individually i think he's going to skyrocket this year into the top five top of this division uh even surpassing herbert uh i just Car, car showed me a lot, man, a lot of moxie in reality football. And I think we're going to see uh, the fruits of his labor and fantasy this year. I, I don't think that O line is going to rank fourth worst in the league again, um, especially when you can literally just throw a bunch of screens to Devontae Adams. Uh, and, you know, they're going to get their RB2 back. He got injured last year, Ken and Drake. Uh, and that, that's, a, that's a piece in the passing game, too. Another piece of the puzzle. I love DC and the silver and black and fantasy drew Dill, What are your guys' thoughts on DC? And then um, what are your thoughts on Russell Wilson? 
Yeah, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm, I'm going to root for DC, um, you know, on and off the field and uh, especially in the fantasy perspective, right? Uh, he was on my radar last year. That's why I drafted him. And obviously he's going to be on a little bit more boards this year because of, you know, some of the star power around him. Um, shout out to, you know, Hunter Renfro, <laughs> uh, you know, getting his payday as well. And, uh, you know, hopefully Waller's up next. So um, some other additions that you mentioned, again, some depth pieces here, but adding guys like Mac Hollins and Keelan Cole, uh, played significant snaps for other teams, right? So again, just some competition and depth there. And it's always good to rely on a veteran like those guys when, you know, somebody's nicked up, you know, throughout the 17 game season now. So uh, it seems like DC is going to have a plethora of targets in the receiving room now. Uh, and then obviously in the running back room too, um, we drafted a couple guys, you know, we have some other veterans like Amir Abdullah on the team right now who can, you know, uh, do a couple different things. So he's got a plethora of weapons, and uh, yeah, I, I think, again, the sky's the limit. Um, again, it's just hard to, you know, pass on that proven commodity we we're talking about with Patrick Mahomes. Again, as much as I hate to admit it, I think that guy can put up 5,000 yards, pretty much just anybody around him, but obviously it helps having a superstar in Kels like that. And um, were you also talking about Russ at this point? Sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, man, I struggle. Uh, I, I think it's this point here I we get to kind of see what he's made of right he doesn't have a Tyler Lockett uh, he's not going to have a DK Metcalf there anymore um, I think he has unproven weapons around him although I think they're talented right I'm not taking anything away from them I think uh, Jerry Judy still has a lot of room for growth because I think his biggest issue is mainly just kind of drops at this point and not having consistency at the quarterback is probably not going to help that kind of connection and you know development in the NFL so um, I think at this point here I, I just don't really see um, that target share being uh, kind of figured out in the beginning portion here. So that's why I'm kind of fading Russell Wilson this year, just because I don't know how the offense is going to shake out because I actually think their running backs are the strength of the team. And I think they're going to be able to utilize both of them to kind of help that offense gel together. So that's kind of my approach. I kind of would uh, pass over him, maybe take him later rounds, uh, if you think the value is good and you don't really have a quarterback late, um, you know, at that point in the process, absolutely go ahead and swoop in on him. Uh, but I'm not going to, you know, go in the first five to six rounds and go get Russell Wilson at this point. Drew? Same. As, as much as it pains me to say, if I'm going to have the argument for Mahomes and his new weapons, I have to have the same argument for Wilson and his new weapons. Now, uh, the pieces, like Dill said, I think there is talent on there. Don't forget, I mean, Cortland Sutton was blowing up. It, it wasn't the entire year, but he was dominating air yards. He was making those vertical threat plays. And to who at the helm at the quarterback position, it was Drew Locke, who is not really, you know, slated as one of the top 10, maybe even 15 to 20 quarterbacks, but he was still making making plays. Now, I know Judy has had his issues with those drops, but I mean, he's only his third year removed from being one of the most vetted wide receivers to come out of college. You know, his ranking still was in the 96 percentile of as far as separation. He's not the fastest guy, but he was open. So we know as much as we've seen Russell do it, that kid is magic. And I believe it, he has a reputation. I feel like there is a lot of pressure on him because of his way i mean let's let's be honest he did force his way out of seattle he wanted this move he got his move so if he doesn't perform and it doesn't work it's on him and, you know it's not like he has a limited amount of weapons we've seen the talent from tim patrick we've seen talent maybe more so in college but i i believe judy will live up to his name and we've seen Cortland Cortland sutton do it now um i agree with dill it is the strength of their team as far as those two running backs that they have but we can also look back to Russell Wilson's best years, especially the Super Bowl year, when he had a great running game, he was unstoppable. So if this all plays out, and don't forget, Denver, always one of the toughest places to play in the first part of the year because of that elevation. So I feel like that's a great advantage for them, too. As soon as he signed that contract, he hit the ground running, throwing passes to those receivers, getting that chemistry owning the room, still being the first one in, last one out. That's just Russell Wilson's game. He's going to die hard for the team. He's um, an incredible film um, watcher, just like Tom Brady. He does remind me a lot as far as a studious quarterback. He's not the big, 
biggest, obviously, but he just he makes things happen. And with a surrounding cast like that and a running game like that, especially with that defense coming into fold, um, arguably one of the best young corners coming out of college in Sertan, we could see if this this puzzle piece that Russell has been building together actually fits. Denver could be really dangerous, but I do fade him under Carr just because that one piece, as far as Devontae Adams being added to Carr's greatness the last year, um, I would uh, I would be more confident choosing Carr's performance over Wilson's at this point. But I wouldn't be I wouldn't be surprised if Wilson um, put that final piece to the puzzle and ended up in the top five or seven quarterbacks also. So in this division, do you have it Herbert, Mahomes, Carr, Wilson? Yes. And deal, you have Mahomes, then Carr, then Herbert, then Wilson? Yes. All right. And then uh, just throw my two cents in there as well. I'm going to go DC, Herbert, then Mahomes, then Wilson. Um, that, that might be a, <laughs> a little bit of an eye popper there. Um, not well, just, I mean, you know, as well, if you're talking about like value, right? If, if you're, you know, so reliant in the fantasy perspective about being the best value picks in your draft, then I think Derek Carr can be, you know, that option, which kind of, you know, supports what you're talking about there. That's a fair point when you get into the rounds and who you can wait for that can finish higher. That's a good point.